right now. The recording in progress. Vinny, uh, yeah. Go do on. you does anybody from your team take different six to eight minute snippets of these episodes and put them on your YouTube? Um yeah, Scott. Okay, good. Like if you a answer a question. Minute. Okay. Well, he puts a one minute piece up. Well, I know the one minute piece because I see that on Instagram. Right. But I didn't know if you're taking like because YouTube, the sweet spot with YouTube is six to eight minutes. You know, like it's let's say you get to a quest or whatever or something crazy or whatever. It's a six to eight. Just putting it out there. OK, so, uh, Scott, let's make it six to eight. But you see, you can only listen put to the, the first whole thing up. Right. No, we put the whole thing on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I know that. But then on you then extrapolate a, a, another like a six minute clip of you answering about zone two and then you title it the we zone do, two thing. It should be IGTV, right? And just do that. Well, I'm talking about put it on YouTube. IGTV needs oh, to be vertical. Scott, Scott would kill me. Yeah, someone's got to do that. Listen, I want to kill myself. There's so much social media stuff. And I know we're talking about this later because yeah. I have a lovely note to read from somebody who donated on the super fan, which will explain what that is. If you guys don't know, it's an awesome thing that helps us move this podcast forward. Right. And, but people get very upset with me because they can't get in touch with you. And I'm like, <laughs> I can't really get in touch with myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah, we're, you know, we're, we're all we're, we're a lot of us are running kind of uh, I don't want to say it's a one man shop because we do have some help, but everyone's overworked and we're trying to make the best of it. So when I say to you, you should do a six to eight minute YouTube clip. I get how infuriating that is. Yeah, you know, I get yeah, I, I and I, it will also help grow your YouTube page. So there the you have people it. people who work for me get mad because they they're overworking they they're doing their job oh i know and then i'll say do something else and they'll say hey man you know i have other clients too you gotta pay me more and it becomes more money. For sure. oh no it's more and expensive by the way, I by get the way it. they deserve the more money but yeah you know i'm begging people right now every to show do, to go do. to amazon.com click through please go to our super fan page because otherwise this would be coming directly out. Of, ooh, I got to I, I got to write this down. Uh, 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 let me just write the guy's name down. Um, I'll just talk about it right now. I, I'll just mix it into this conversation. OK. We we do this for free. We yes. give out. I do five shows a week. Right. For free. People, yeah. have, when, when I go to parties and stuff, I'm, I'm with big timers at parties. You know, John Grisham at a party, he'll go. So um, what do you do for a living? I do a podcast. I have a free podcast. How, 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 how do you make pretty, money on that? Pretty highfalutin. John Grisham is, is asking me, how, how do you make a living? You tell John Grisham to mind his business. Hey, John, I, I got hey. confidential money, pal. That's what I tell him. You, you understand what I'm saying, John? A, a time to kill, more like a time to mind your own business. Time to get out of my face. That's right. No, you know, I, I, go, I go to these parties with these people and uh, yeah. they'll say, so you do a podcast. Yeah. Do, do you monetize that? Well, yeah, we, we do a couple of ads and the whole thing. Oh, that pays the bills. You know, so like, oh. yeah, I have <laughs> not really. <laughs> I have trouble explaining. And, and I'm glad. And look, yeah. we did not plan to do this. No, no, no. no. Sit back, pumpkin, because I'm going to I'm going to tell people how the world works around here. OK, <laughs> so. I love it when you say sit back pumpkin and, and every woman who's listening is can relate to that. Yeah. But I know what you mean. I don't take I, offense I, to it. You know, I I'm know you explaining you a bit, but you understand you already know because <laughs> you're just like me. We're in the same business of giving stuff away for free. And when you try Absolutely. to explain that to John Grisham at a dinner party, he's it's like premium model. the biggest question mark on his, you know, so all right. So I do five shows a week for free. Free. Don't charge a dime for them. I do um, at, at at Pure Vitamin Club. I do a tip every week. Right. At Pure Coffee on Club. Instagram. I it, on the on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. I do it every week. Yep. I do a tip. Some of them come over to my Instagram. I'm doing all of this stuff all the time. I'm constantly giving free content. Yeah. Constantly. And I just asked you to add another box to tick on the to-do list. Yeah, on, on, yes. the, on the free content. I, yeah. I put this show up. Uh, this show is on everything you get. Stitcher, iTunes, yep. uh, here, your mama's basement. You, mm -hmm. know, you name it. It's everywhere, right? And then on top of that, we now do the video version of it. Right. By the way, that costs more because now Bill has to 
take care of two shows. That's why I don't put this on immediately. I don't put the video because right. you don't have to cut that music out. Trying to save somehow, him a little bit of work. Yeah. I could take music off of YouTube, but if I play it on my free show, that's illegal. I, don't ask me to explain that one. Because technically you're the getting the views on your YouTube, which counts as a paid thing, which who knows if your YouTube's actually generating any okay, revenue. But I, I guess um, YouTube can look and see. I don't make a dime on YouTube. I don't put advertising. <laughs> Listen, I made $2.30 off of Medium last month. So but, I, would like to, I would like to see you beat that. Okay. I, I, I can't beat it because I'm not going to even make a dollar. So all of this goes up for free. But it's not free. It actually costs me money. You got to understand this, folks. I do five shows a week. Anna works for the show. Gina Grad works for the show. I get Andy Schreiber for free. Those are the three people. And when a guest comes on on Friday or a Saturday guest comes on, that's free. But I have two professionals that work on the show. This is what they do for a living, right? This is true. I have Megan, who you guys heard on last Monday's show. She's my assistant. She gets paid to work on this show. My daughter gets a check from this show. Not because I'm trying to be nice to my daughter. She's actually probably one of the most underpaid people on this show. And God, she's going to hear this, and I'm going to be in trouble. She's going to ask for a raise. Bill Meadows gets a check for this show. Uh, Scott Mulvaney. Bill Meadows, who's been nominated for an Oscar, works on your show. <laughs> who's that? Bill Meadows, who's been nominated for an Oscar. I, I have a, a, an show. Oscar nominee working yeah. on this show. I, I, I pay that guy. Uh, Debbie works on this show. Debbie Tartarigi. All of these people work on this show. They all receive money for this Debbie show. Debbie runs everything. If Debbie has a problem with someone, they're gone. That's just the way it works around. You're all I tell everybody when, when, when they get hired on, if I hear from you, Debbie, blah, 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 blah. Nope, you're, you're the done. next one to go. That's right. Debbie ain't going. Right? Debbie, run, so, Debbie runs the show, y'all. So I put out a free show, but it costs a lot of money to run right. it. And people can go, well, geez, Vin, you got a vitamin company, you got a coffee company, you got... Yeah, I, I, that's what I love. Hey, you on. need I'll, to make some money, of course. I, I, that's how and you I should live. be making a lot of money at that stuff. There's nothing wrong with making money. I, I'm, I'm not, here to yeah. demystify anybody thinking that they shouldn't be making money off of stuff. I'm not. I understand. I understand that the business model has changed. So when somebody comes along, even your good friend Anna, and says, uh, "Tell Scott to make sure he does six to eight minute chunks whenever you have like a good six to eight minute chunk that he can then right. extrapolate and turn it into." Vinny explains zone two training and he can turn it into a YouTube thing that would actually be good for YouTube. And I have the same visceral reaction that you basically when, when they told when Jessica Gottlieb said, and I have to do whatever Jessica Gottlieb tells me to do because she's one of the reasons that I hooked up with you yeah, and that, uh, you know, we did a lot of things in the early days that set us up on this podcast was because of Jessica Gottlieb. So I learned to let her boss me around when she said to get on clubhouse I was like, Jessica, I want to wring your neck. I don't have time for another thing. And now I'm doing pod, uh, club cast. Another, another free thing. Another and, free and, thing. And, to and support I go the on your clubhouse I want to do. Like yes, you do. Yeah. As often as you can. And it's, and it's all really good. But I, I, I want you to know that I hear you loud and clear. And it doesn't stop. I, I'm putting free recipes out all the time. I'm putting, I, I uh, make sure I video content, everything for my Instagram stories, every time I'm recipe developing, which is almost every day so that you guys can look at that and get inspiration. Like it's like, and you think like, well, what are you just taking a few videos on the, off the cuff? I'm like, I don't do shit. That's off the cuff. Right. You, you so start doing I off a video. The I want to make sure it's yeah, good. Yeah. It, I, uh, you Absolutely. understand it because you Absolutely. know, when you do a video that's off the cuff, then you write me back like, wait, what is that? What did you make? What is the thing? It's blurry. I don't know. I'm going to do it right. So it makes sense. And I'm it, communicating cl clear communication is important to both of us, to Vinny and myself. It, it is. Do I it. hear you. And so Anna, but you still have to do it. <laughs> the bottom line is <laughs> too if, bad. If I shut this laptop and I, and I turn this roadcaster off, and got rid of everyone, got rid of you, Gina, Megan, Debbie, Bill, Tallulah, got rid of everyone. Guess what would happen? 
I would start having more income. Because as it is, I pull money from my my own income, whenever this show runs short. And there's months when it runs short, it costs so much to run this and not, the bandwidth, I don't even get into the bandwidth. When you have a show the size of this, there's bandwidth. And yeah, you know, Villa Capelli, thank God. Uh, Bel Campo, thank the Lord, because all of that goes into the till too. None of that money ends up in Vinny's pocket. It all goes into to the till Absolutely. to pay for everything. Pay for everything. And by the Please. way, uh, wait, let, let me finish. Yeah, yeah. So I can work less. You know how they say, don't work hard, work smart. If I shut this laptop and turn that roadcaster off, I would have more money. I would do less and have more money. It, it's almost like, why don't I do it? <laughs> why don't you do <laughs> shut it? Shut this, turn it off and go upstairs and just watch television and wait for the money to roll into my vitamin company because I don't and my coffee company and foods. I don't need this. I could just go to conventions and glad hand and shake. Listen, here's the thing. I'm going to tell stores. you something. That's all I have to do. I'm going to use a done. friend of mine as an example. Go he on. is he is a comedy writer, a very accomplished television comedy writer wrote and has been writing for 25 years is about uh, maybe two years older than I am. So he's like 50 51, right? A very accomplished guy. I'm not going to say his name or any shows he's written on because I don't want to divulge his identity, but has worked on very well known shows, comedy shows, uh, single cam, mostly over the years, but started in sitcom. He right now is everybody's basically saying, well, you have to basically write and produce your own content now because he can't he hasn't had a job in like a year, year and a half. Right. And nobody's interested in hiring a 51 year old white guy in the writer's room. Uh, Anna, this is not a joke. Um, as you know, let, let me just throw this in so that people can understand what that means. Um, there's always been appropriation in the writer's room. So Absolutely. when they had 40, no, no, the, the, the white guys times are done <laughs> for if, now, you know, if they could get a black, I'm not kidding, half black, half Asian, gay woman, they can cover three spots with one. <laughs> then I'm not, I'm not, and, then the white guys can have their jobs making, back because they would cover being, it with one person. This is not be, being a racist. No, 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 no. They're they're looking for diversity in writers' rooms. They they are they would. Uh, I had clients who ran some of the biggest shows oh, no, no. out there, and um, everything okay over there, Anna? He's looking for his phone. I don't have it here. I'm sorry. Okay, that was a special appearance by Lauren Tarquinio by a white writer. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, I, I had clients who ran some of the biggest shows in Hollywood, but friends, for, just, to, just to name one. And they would all tell me, they said we would, you know, there were four or five women who happened to be a different ethnicity. They happened to be a woman, they happened to be gay. They, they worked constantly. They just had to be sitting in a room. They wouldn't have to write a joke all season. They wouldn't have to write a story. They wouldn't have well, to do anything. Have I, I'm going to gonna, I'm room. gonna be devil's advocate and say they didn't have to write a joke all season or they, they didn't want to take their jokes all season. I'm just going to say that because as a woman who's been in a writer's room, it's not always the easiest to have to be yeah. in a room full of men. I, I'll tell you one of those jokes. Things. I'm just saying. I'm so I don't know that that's, as, that's their perspective. I, I don't want to get into a big political conversation no, about no, it. No, this is but, not political. Me, this, is, this is the fact. This is Hollywood. This is a fact. Not, My friend can't get a job right now. Because he he's a worked. white male. Wanda Sykes well, was the most popular writer. It turns out she was a good writer. Wanda Sykes absolutely. was funny. Yeah. Wanda Sykes happened to be funny, talented, black, female, and gay. She, she was like... She ticked a lot of boxes. Yeah. You, if you had Wanda, if you could get Wanda Sykes on the show, you, you had a show. Like, she would only be on the top shows. But she, absolutely. Ticked, she literally ticked five boxes. Not right. only was she the right color, had a vagina, you know, all of that stuff, but she was actually talented. Absolutely. She, there's very few Wanda Sykes out there, by the way. There, there's I didn't listen, mean to go off on that tangent, but there's plenty of other talented people, white, black, Asian, gay, straight. There's plenty of other talented people. And if you're a talented person who hasn't had a break yet, you're probably screaming, Vinny, I'm very talented. I just haven't had a break yet. I get it. That's not what I'm saying. The whole point of this story was to illustrate that 
he's not, my friend is not moving along with the times and the times require, it used to be, you could write a spec script, uh, which is writing a script, a full script without being paid for it. Usually an idea of something from your life, or you'd write a spec script of an existing show. So like, what's a popular show? I don't even know what a popular script. I, I, I could tell you one right of now. my clients was still in college, getting a degree in writing. She wrote a spec script for cheers. And that's how she got. Okay, her but I'm talking about a current show. I know shows that existed in the past, but what would be a show now that they would tell the new writers a new hot show? Are there even any hot shows? I don't even watch it. I'm, I'm watch watching reality. a show right now that I just Serena found it, and we've been watching. It's called Louder Milk. Are you familiar with this show? Oh yeah, that's supposed to be good. No, it's not good. It's great. Bingeable. It's bingeable. okay. So yeah, you pick a show. You write a spec script, meaning like, let's say The Office, that's a familiar one. You write an, right. an episode of The Office and what would the characters do? And it's a completely original episode. And you would use that as one of your samples as well as your original spec. And people would read it because people used to read in Hollywood. They would actually, that was their job to read scripts. And you could get jobs based on those things, right? And then they try you out for a 13 week cycle, which is the cycle that it takes for the writer's guild to pay you. And if they liked you, they may renew you for the whole year and, or they would fire you and you'd have to go find another job. And if you, no. the chemistry wasn't there, that's basically how it works. So now my friend is being told, you got to start producing and directing and making your own stuff and put stuff on YouTube and you should be tweeting jokes and you should be doing this. And he, and he is so like, you got to be fucking kidding me. And I'm like, yeah, that's basically what Vinny and I have been doing for 10 years, putting out free content. It seems crazy. It's the freemium model until you either launch a company, like you've launched several companies. I've launched yeah. a company. We sell books. You sell your, your the movies um, and, and stuff starts to happen. But what's happening now, and I guess I'm solidly Gen X and I'm I'm assuming the millennials are up to speed with this, but the freemium model is not going anywhere. So if you turned everything off and just waited for the 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 money to come in from the companies and the the books without doing any fresh promotion out there with your face out there i would say it would start to trickle down a little bit so i think you do still need to be on that you don't have to be paying us to be here sure you could do your but i think your face still has to be there uh at least every now and then saying hey folks Vinny Tordrich, your well, good intentions yeah, have been stolen. I, I, I guess. That's, I mean, my, that's, that's why, my argument. That's why I didn't flip it down. I figured Anna would come in and, and, and talk me off. off the, but, but Anna, you got to understand, the guy, I, I'm going to talk about this guy. I'm not going to even tell you his name off the air because you know the guy. And he called me. I, I, got, a, I got an email out of nowhere. And um, at yeah, I know who you're talking about. Email, and mm -hmm. he, he said, hey, man, kind of hat in hand. He goes, um, my my business has completely dried up and uh, I don't know what to do. And my heart sunk because I know this guy's married with two kids. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God. Do you know who I'm talking about, Anna? It, I thought I did, but now I don't. Text me if you if you if you text me his name, then we Anna and I used to hold stuff up into the screen, but we, we can't, can't do, do that, that anymore. anymore. <laughs> so if you text me his name, I'll tell you if it's him. But he you know, super nice guy. And he didn't expect this, but I just plunked the phone down and called him because I was very concerned. You know, I was like, oh my God, what happened? Because I don't know how anyone else's models work, right? I, I don't know. Right. How but, but I mean, I think that the, the, right. these business models, things are updated now and you do, it, it's, it's a difficult thing too, I think, to be, be older and not have been brought up to put your shit out there. Because writers... And creators used to be very private. Remember how like you would never read interviews with movie stars when we were kids? You would rarely hear like, and you would just love to get a, a Rolling Stone interview with like your favorite musician. You just didn't hear from people. And now people put their shit, everybody's shit is out there all the time. It's totally changed. I, I've forgotten how to work uh, text, Anna. Yeah, That's apparently you have, because I've been really vamping, hoping that you would just type. Well, well, I, 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 now, you know that video I tried to send you? I can't yeah. cancel it now. I'm trying to cancel it. Just hit the back button. Put your cursor cancel. in. I, I hit cancel. And Here's what you do. Vinny, hit, hit the back button. Oh, and it, it, went away. Whole... it went away. It went away. Good job. Okay. Good job. I'm really proud of you. Yeah. You're doing it, a great it job. Stuck. It was stuck. It was stuck. Okay. I understand. All right, All right so... Anyway, um, so this guy calls me 
And, you know, I called him and I was like, man, what happened? And you see, I don't understand anyone else's business. Like, I don't, right. I don't know. I knew this guy was really popular on the internet and I knew he was pushing the same kind of low carb thing I was pushing. And probably shouldn't go into too much more detail. No, I'm not. So, okay. Uh, he, he said to me, um, you do phone calls, right? And I'm like, yeah, but that's not part. I, I said that that's not part of my business model. I only do it because it's the only time I get to coach anymore. Um, most people don't even know I do these phone calls. It's on my, my website. If they go to vinnytoyers.com, they'll see you can, you can literally set up a phone call and he'll go, well, how much he said, how much do you charge? And I said, I don't know. It's like a hundred bucks or something for a half an hour and probably double. I don't even know what I charge. It just goes into, you know, an account. So he was like that, wait, someone can talk to you for a hundred bucks. And I'm like, I know it is pretty yeah. amazing. And he goes, really? And I said, yeah. And he said, uh, how, how do you make money? <laughs> and I said, well, that's not part of my business model. I just do it because I like coaching people and it has to, I have to put a price on it because everything has to be worth something to someone. Right. right. Does that make sense? Yes, because I even think sometimes we give away too much free stuff. Well, that's what everyone tells me. And then he said to me, he goes, yeah, you know, he goes, uh, I was I was charging 400 or 350 or 400. And I said, for like an hour? He goes, no, for like a half an hour. And he goes, and then I had the sales funnel and you had to buy the program and you had to get, and I would sell them this. Oh, and that see, I just don't have the stomach to do all that. And you see, I sat there and thought, okay, that's why you're, you're now not that that's why the business is drying up. Right? Because this idiot, I, I almost said to him, I'm sorry, but I'm screwing up your business because all the stuff that you're charging people for, I'm giving it away for free. Right? I'm just I'm just handing it out. And, you know, I think he got that by the end of the phone call is like, Everything that like my, my PDF has been downloaded 300 over 300,000 times. I know now. you need to charge $3 for it. Anna, if I had just something charged, to help pay for the bandwidth. Okay. Let's say I had charged $10. $3. Let's say I charge. No, $10. don't even do $10. But if, if I had from the beginning, I would have, oh, you have million dollars yeah. from that. But think about that. I would have 3 million from that. And yeah. I'm still giving, and that's what's well, that's on me. you because you should you should ask a four ninety nine, more than fair. I keep saying every year I'm going to put you know a price on it and charge for it and the whole thing, but you know what that you know what that would help pay for this podcast. It would. Maybe that's what I should do. Make it. I, it is what you should do. <laughs> I've been telling you that. I will see. I, I don't know. Here, maybe, here's. Maybe. The Here's the thing, though. It, I still don't think four ninety nine or even three ninety nine is an abuse at, at all. You're not taking advantage of people at all. You can put a couple bucks in your pocket to help offset everything. I think that that's really great. But I, I wouldn't even know. charge four. I would charge five dollars because I'm not going to fool into anyone four ninety nine. Yeah, it's like give me five. Right, do bucks. five dollars. You know what? Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll call Debbie and say, Debbie, you want? I'm a fan of the ninety nines. I think it's fun. I don't like the 99s. I like the 99s. I, I, I like to, you know, I, I like I know. to go in five. You, like, you me, like to round it up a cent. G give me a Lincoln. Let's just do it, you know. Oh, a Lincoln. We then charge 504 for it instead of 499. Wait, is it Lincoln? Oh, no, that's Jefferson. Never mind. I was thinking Lincoln's on the $5 bill, but I was thinking he's on the nickel. <laughs> that's Jefferson. Never mind. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Lincoln's not on the $5 bill? He is on the five. I was doing my, I was thinking nickel instead of $5. Oh, okay. All right. Which I don't know why, because here's a, here's a pro tip about how I saved money uh, when our whole family went to Europe in 2011. Think in Lincoln. Every time you get a five dollar bill, put it away. Don't spend it. You put it in a box. Yeah. And, then, and then when you go to do a thing, all of a sudden you'll have a lot of money. I'm telling you. Five dollar bills. Think in Lincoln. Anna, should we do like one day? Let, let's just do a whole finance show because you and I, would I love to do you and I show. have never made like great amounts of money in our lives yet. We've saved significant about amounts of money. Right. I mean, like I will say I am very close to having my nut covered through my investments of real estate and a couple of businesses that I've invested in that I don't have. I, so I can focus my energy on doing this stuff. And if I get a voiceover job, great. Right. 
But you, you see, that, and, and I feel like everybody should know how to make their themselves independent like that. I mean, you and I did the same thing. I, I'm so scared of losing everything. I just do that. So because you and I, well, you did, you lost shit when you had cancer. I lost everything. And you saw how tenuous this whole thing is. If I were to say lose my voice or something happened and I couldn't like write recipes or sell books anymore or talk on a microphone and I, can't, I don't have my skills or somehow I become disabled, I don't have a 401k. But what I do have are different investments that I've made instead to you help and I, if, cover my nut. That, Anna, you and I cannot have a 401k because we've no, never worked no for one, anyone. No one would give us one. Yeah, they, it's like, who's going to give us a 401k? So not, we have to save that. our own money. Anna, yeah. let me do a quick ad. And then okay. I want to talk about vegans and Cam Newton. Okay. El Campo. El Campo. Guess El Campo. who is now a Bel Campo person? Oh, um, John Travolta. No, close. Okay. Mari Tortorich now buys oh, Bel Campo meat. Oh my it, goodness. It, you know, you know how she found out? It was when she was on the Friday show. When you know we did a Bel Campo ad, she wrote it down, and later on she called me up. She goes, Now, how much do I have to spend to get 15? I said, Mom, if you spend ten dollars, you get 15% off. That's right. You gotta spend over a hundred to get the you know the you know the the free shipping and then right. i started thinking i said ma is, is your grocery stores over and she goes well the, you know they're running out of meat and i said here's the deal ma they had closed right because of ida the, the only midway market on railroad avenue is still open i said but hang on ma railroad avenue is still open but there's other storms coming down that gulf you guys could get hit again and okay, season's not over yet. I said, don't go by. I, I said, I know what you want to do. You just want to try it out. You want to try Bel Campo, but don't buy just enough to get your free shipping. I said, buy several hundred dollars worth. And then, you know, you, you'll be stocked in case because they, they have the, 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 the Generac now because of me. She goes, thank God for the Generac. I said, no, 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 no. Thank Vinny for the Generac. <laughs> You're thinking the wrong person. So they have a freezer that's not going to go out because they have the Generac. I said, Ma, don't buy $100 just to get the free ship. Buy several hundred dollars because you don't know when you're going to be able to get good meat again. So Marie Tartarich put in that promo code Vinny Tartarich. Well, not Vinny Tartarich, she put in Vinny. And of course, she spelled it with the IE because she gave me the damn name. She knows how to spell it. V-I-N-N-I-E, 15% off. If after the discount code, you've spent at least $100, you get free shipping. Can't beat it. Bell Campo, the best meat out there, now being consumed by Mari and Cy Tartarich. So go so check it out. Guys. Yeah, we'll get her on when she gets her Bell Campo and let her do an ad. Oh, yes. I think How about that? So folks, if you live in Hurricane or, or um, uh, uh, or tornado alley or anything like that, and you have a Generac and you, you know, you could keep meat cold indefinitely, go get Bel Campo. Just let you just go get it. B E L C A M P O promo code Vinny V I N N I E will get you 15% off. If you've spent over a hundred dollars after that discount, free shipping. Cam Newton is no longer the starting quarterback for the New England he Carolina what was he New England Patriots Anna come on don't pretend wasn't he Carolina at some point yeah he was somewhere down there and then when you remember the cute guy that used to be up at uh New England Brady Tom um, Brady I would yeah. not call him the cute guy he's hot come on he's a smoke show anyway he went to Tampa remember and yes. they had to bring someone in so they brought this vegan and they went in. to the Super Bowl the Tampa Tampa he went and they won and they won Tom Brady you know yeah. who didn't go to the Super Bowl? Cam, Cam Newton. Newton. Right. And how does Belichick like, feel about that? All, look, Gregor and Grieger and McDo they all brag. Oh, look, Cam Newton's a big vegan. Guess where he's not anymore? He's not at the Patriots. <laughs> not even close. Okay, but wasn't Tom Brady a big low carb guy? Wasn't he like a big uh he was and guy? he's he's the oldest quarterback in the league? And guess who's starting again this year? Mr. Low Carber himself, Tom Brady. Yeah. Again, 
Uh, the Patriots picked up uh, Mac Jones. Um, so they have a real first round pick there and that's who they're going with. You would think a veteran like that wouldn't get beat out, but look, Cam Newton didn't even look like Cam Newton anymore after he became a vegan. And by really? the way, you will see a little Cam Newton in my next film. Mm. You'll see a little hit on, look, did I know, look, when I was putting this together, I had this footage of Cam Newton bragging about being a vegan a year ago when I started putting this movie together. Did I know that he would be out of the league before my movie came out? Hell no. He's not out completely. Didn't somebody else pick him up? Who's going to pick him up? Where is he going to play? Who wants him? I'll, I'll hire him. I'll in, hire him for um, Anna's football league, the AFL. He went to Boston and stunk up the place. <laughs> yeah. If you can imagine Boston smelling any worse. Boston, are you going to take that from him? I, I, I threw it down, Boston. I threw it down. <laughs> I I threw it down. down. Boston, listen up. Golf <laughs> through the tea in the harbor. You can yeah. throw some tea at Vinny Tortorich. Yeah, okay. My face with it. That's right. I love, by, by the way, I love Beantown. I love Boston. Have you ever spent time there? They don't like it when you call it Beantown. <laughs> I love, yeah, I call it Beantown. I, I love that. I love Chi Town and Beantown and yeah. San Fran. Yeah. All those Frisco, cities. Um, Frisco, and, it's amazing. Frisco, you got to say it with the lisp. Um, <laughs> they Anna, love that. They love Anna, it. Yeah. Have you spent any significant time in Boston? Yes. New Orleans. My I'm Uncle sorry. Bruce lives there. I'm sorry, but Boston has better seafood than New Orleans. There, I've said it. I've said it. Absolutely. I've said it. I can't take it back. By the way, did you get that picture that I texted you? So there's a, there's a couple from New Orleans who live up here in Solvang and have a wine bar called Clean Slate, and she makes Cajun food. Is that the, uh, the red beans and rice? Yeah, Lauren had red beans and rice and jalapeno cornbread and a beer. That's why I say the, AS, the ASAP. Her husband had right there. That's, That's right red there. beans and rice, cornbread, and mm -hmm. beer. He That's gave me a piece of andouille, andouille sausage out of it. That's what well, I had. Well, there you go. That's yeah, brain, he on, the brain on brain crime right there. <laughs> That's Lauren Tarquinio. Yeah. I'm doing doing it right. But um, I'm very much looking forward to when I can just have, I, I asked her, I was like, can you make an etouffee without any flour in it? So it'll just be. Grain I'm me. sorry, Anna. And I was like, I can whoa, make it whoa, myself. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Which word did you use just now? Etouffee. It's etouffee. I say it the French way. Etouffee. A I say it the Cajun way. Etouffee. Okay. All right. Etouffee. All right. In Alabama, they say etouffee. By the in way, there's Louisiana. Cajuns in Alabama, so don't start with me. In Louisiana, they say etouffee. I know well, it starts with an E. I know, but it has an accent. God, you know where I'm spending Christmas this year? Speaking of French. <laughs> in France? Worse. At Kristen's house. <laughs> You're going to eat so much. Because, you know, she spent years living in France. She basically yeah. is French. Oh, my God. You're going to eat a lot of food. Yeah. Um, can I read you a note from a super fan donor? Go on. Remember when you said a few weeks ago... Oh, what's her name? Oh, here it is. I found it. Lindsay. Hello, darling. Shout out to Lindsay. Do you remember when you said you got a super fan donation of 2464? Yeah, 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 yeah. And you couldn't figure out what it was? Well, and by the way, this thing started our whole conversation today because Lindsay was trying to write you to tell. And by the way, she's cute. So that's on you for missing her picture that she sent you. Can you can you send it to me? Wait, can, is she on Facebook? No, mm -mm. I'm not even going to tell you. She's Lindsay, not on Facebook. Lindsay, thank you for your contribution. How's Lindsay spelled? L-I-N-D-S-E-Y. Her last name is Paul. And I want to read you the note she wrote to you. Vinny, I sent a super fan donation today, and I wanted to explain the amount because I thought it might bring a smile to your face as a fellow competitive shooter. I'm a longtime listener, and I absolutely love your podcast. I try really hard to be NSNG most of the time, but often fail. I do see the benefits and preach it to anyone who will listen or inquires about how I stay thin. I've never struggled with weight, but I'm constantly trying to find ways to improve my health. So NSNG speaks to me. Anyway, I sent a super fan donation of 2464 today. 
This number is significant because on August 6th, I set a new cold bore world record by having three consecutive impacts on a 36 by 36 target at 2,464 yards in competition. It was a really cool achievement for me. I've only been competing in extreme long range shooting since 2019. Anyway, I just wanted to tell the story that went with the number. I wish my donation could have been $2,464, but I'm a police officer, so that didn't quite fit in my budget. I cannot tell you the, the sport she's doing is so. I knew involved. that would make you happy. I, I, my my Does buddy. Does it make you happy to hear that? I, I'm going to make Lindsay a little wet right now. My my good friend just bought a um, off of a guy who was uh, hurting for money. Just bought a 50 cal, and uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to travel to go shoot the 50 cal uh, because I have a weak shoulder now because it's been redone and everything we're figuring out a system of sandbags and everything I can put between me and, and the gun. Uh, these guns can shoot out to two miles, these 50 cows. I mean, they, they can go. Yeah, it, it shoots a chunk of lead. And um, I am I am excited um, about shooting. But what, what this woman is doing is no joke. Uh, her picture on Facebook, is she in a wedding dress with her husband? I don't know. I don't see her Facebook, but I'll forward you the email that she sent so you can have it. Yeah, send, she... send it to me via yep. email. Yep. I'm going to send it to the email that you actually will check. There we go. Good. Um, Wait, I almost sent it back to her. <laughs> wow. Yeah, okay. I was trying to. She's adorable. I was and to... obviously a badass. Oh, no. A anyone. She... Yeah. Let me explain something to you. Complete you don't just go. Ass. You don't just go to the store and buy a rifle. Did she say which rifle she's using? You can look at the picture I just sent and probably figure it out because I don't know. All right. Um, yeah, you don't just go pick up a rifle from you know the the store and do that. It's it's all it's very involved, um, and you know it's a bench rest. It's, I'm I'm assuming it's a bench rest. Uh, oh yeah. Oh my God. This thing. You're is looking at it. Yeah. It, um, there's a beautiful woman. I'm going, oh my God, because I'm looking at the rifle. <laughs> I know. Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> I'm like looking at it, going, oh my God. Look at I this. was like, oh, Vinny's going to be very sad he didn't see this email. I definitely have to flag it. Uh, I'll, I'll go and read everything she, uh, whatever she put here. But um, wow. <clears throat> she's in amazing shape. Yeah, she is. The rifle is almost as big as her. Yeah, it is. Yeah, she spent some money on that. <laughs> oh I'm going to find this uh, article about eating healthy for kids. Wait, hang on. I got one more question for Lindsay. Yeah. Um, Lindsay, how many rounds do you get through that barrel before it's just shot out? Please let us know. Because I was having this conversation with someone the other day with those high, those high powered rifles. They don't get very many rounds through them. But she, uh, man, look at this, man. She, she is a badass. Okay, I, I can stay here all day and just study this photo and I can't do that. Okay. Um, Daniel Frey wrote a note. Fry. He, he pronounced Fry. it Fry. Yeah. God, I can't say anything right today. <clears throat> Vinny, have you done a show about talking to kids about making healthy options when it comes to food choices? I didn't know if maybe you and Anna previously discussed this. I mean, we have, but we've done so many episodes that I wouldn't even know where to point him, you know? Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. And, and we do the wow. Vinny Sunday school that's supposed to be more about the kids and everything mm -hmm. else. But usually on the Sunday school, I complain about kids. So <laughs> we never get around. To I, I have raised a child who's a very picky eater. So I'm very eager to see what uh, Daniel's going to ask. So he says, I'm trying to figure out the best approach to do this with my kids. I have two girls, 15 and 13. My 15 year old seems to do pretty well about this. It's the 13 year old I'm concerned about. She's seen me eat this way for years and sometimes pokes fun at it, but she's unwilling to attempt this herself. She likes bread and sweets too much. She's mostly unwilling to even try lower carb options. My wife has had her own journey while not fully NSNG. She's significantly cut back on them and she's lost around 30 pounds. Awesome. My older daughter doesn't tend to go for the higher carb foods, but she has her moments. Here are my concerns. I've been studying this stuff for quite a long time. I'm aware of just visible markers of things that may lead her down an insulin resistant path or even a type two diabetes path. She's a very small girl, but she started to develop this gut that is starting to overhang her pants. 
It's been more noticeable lately as she's insistent on wearing half shirts. Another issue I'm trying to address. I get kids have different requirements as they're growing. Maybe they need more carbs than adults, but I feel it's the type of carbs she could do better at. I by no means want to make her feel bad about her choices or even consider being something like fat shaming. I just want her to be healthy and live a long and healthy life. I certainly don't ever want her to go through what I went through as a kid, always the fat kid picked on for it, et cetera. If I had to guess, she takes more after me than my wife and older daughter when it comes to what carbs have done to me over the years. I didn't know if you previously addressed it or not. I think you kind of did. Do you recall a show number I could go back to or maybe bring it up as a refresher on a future show with Anna? Her perspective would probably be good here as I'm really only thinking of how best to approach this with girls since I have no boys. It, Daniel, it, it's tough. It's more, more difficult with girls than guys. Uh, I'm going to be honest because it's just a mere conversation. They think that you're judging them and saying they're fat. Mm. And um, I would get your wife involved as much as you can. Um, coming from a woman, sometimes it, you know, don't tell her she's fat at all. Do, do not go down any. No, of that. never. By the way, uh, and a, a mother should never say that to a child either. No, no, stay away from you're getting fat or any, mm -hmm. don't or put it away, anything. Word, any, yeah, keep, yeah, stay away from that. Um, <clears throat> do not talk about her clothes. Um, you, you know, she you, had 13. 13 yeah. to 13 to 15 that range is the toughest with girls they're trying to find themselves they're yeah. trying to find a look they're trying to fit in you know and the they'll, look will change like six times in five and minutes. then they'll go to college and it'll change all over again yeah just just let it go just you know um hell i, I remember anna's kid had blue hair purple hair every time <laughs> I, I would like bet myself what color was the hair going to be when i showed up and now she has a uh, long natural hair and would never dye her hair. Any, you know right. what I mean? It's just, she's little girls are always trying to figure out their place in the world, mm -hmm. you know? And by the way, the hair color thing, if anybody's fighting on hair color, don't fight them on hair color. You've got bigger fish to fry. Yeah, it, it, Tallulah Let them dye the hair. Who cares? Hair colors, but uh, she, she never got into pink or anything like that. It was always like she added a tint of blue to her. Right. You know, that kind and it of grows thing. out. Or their hair will and fall out fine. because they overdye the it. <laughs> Let cute. them learn that experience. They're cute and they're girls, and it, you know, it's okay. It, 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 don't don't try to fight battles with her. That that is no. not winnable. Um, you you want you want her to always feel like you're on her side. Um, you want to be in the you know you're not fighting against her. You want to fight with her. Does that make sense? You, you want to be on yeah. the side. You, you, you're, you're in this together. Um, don't try to get rid of the carbs. Uh, you're trying to cut them out. It's just going to make her, you know, it's like a drug addict. They'll just go find them somewhere else. That's true. I just make sure that they're healthy options. Make sure that, you know, look, like when we were kids, it was like, you know, you can't have, how can you have any meat? If you know, how, how can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat in the song, you know, from the wall album? You know, um, that that's a true thing. You know, pudding in England means dessert. And in the song, he'll go, eat your meat. How can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat? Eat your meat. Do that with your kids. You can have treats. You can have sugar. You can have whatever. Eat your meat first. Or eat the meat, meaning the healthy stuff. Um, make sure there's cheese there. There's meat. Uh, the healthy vegetables. That's the great, you know, kids don't, you mentioned in your thing, do they need more carbs? No. Carbs are a, a macronutrient you really don't need. But if you're going to have them, you might as well have them in cruciferous vegetables. Make broccoli and bacon. That'll get them to eat. Yeah, that kind of, yeah. I, I will say the the reason, you know, listen, I was, I was writing those recipes and eat happy during the time that I had a middle schooler and a high schooler. And she's now almost done with college. And um, they're family friendly recipes. So you can't go wrong doing that. If you're, if, if you're trying to provide NSNG type of food at home, and if they feel like just a steak with steamed broccoli is too restrictive, maybe because that's not as fun for them. So come up with other things. Maybe go through the cookbooks with her and say, hey, what would you like to eat? Let's cook this together for dinner. Cooking with them yeah. is really great. I will also say this. You cannot 
tell them what to do. I know we think as parents, we can tell kids what to do and you can to a certain extent to keep them safe. Like you're not going to stay out past midnight or you're please don't cross the street without looking like obviously things like that. But with stuff that when it comes to diet, exercise, health related stuff, you have to trust that your kids have an innate sense of them wanting to look good, feel good, just like you do. Everybody has that feeling like everybody wants to look good and feel good and eat food that nourishes them and eat food that's fun to eat that tastes good which we know as nsngers it does but kids might not trust that because they have a certain pleasure center that gets activated by eating a bag of cheetos or a bag bag of cool ranch doritos and i get that so i would say you're right maybe you don't buy for me i wouldn't buy as many of the junk foody things and by the way i caught shit from lucy all the time like you never buy anything fun. And I'm like, okay, well, what would, what would you want to buy? And it would literally be like, she'd go to Seven Eleven, get a little thing of Takis or something, something. And that would do it. Like she just wanted to have that little rebellion. And she was such a picky eater. This kid was a noodle nugget kid when she was younger. And she finally opened up to like having salmon, bacon, and chicken. She, she would have burgers Um, and then right before she went to college, she was diagnosed with Hashimoto's and she has the kind of Hashimoto's where her thyroid is currently overactive. So she's not on any, there's no thyroid medication for her to take. She has to tamp down the immune response. And the way to do that is to cut out gluten and dairy for her. So she does, she manages it through diet and has just kind of come naturally to, yes, she'll bake some gluten-free things from time to time. But for the most part, now she eats NSNG and she's only 22. God, I wish I knew about it when I was 22. So for her to go through teenage years and then come out the other side, I'm telling you, 13, you're just beginning the journey. Let them go on the roller coaster a little bit more. If she gets a belly and feels it, trust me, she feels it. Girls will look in the mirror and spot every last little thing. They're their own worst critic. Absolutely. And so if anything, you need to handle more the emotional component of how, how are we letting any sort of body dysmorphia creep up? And then, well, you know what the physical actions that you can take of eating NSNG and moving your body will help manage that as well, by the way, and will help manage the hormonal craziness of teenagehood as it is. So I, just, I, I feel for you. And I get the questions that you're asking. I lived this. And oh, by the way, Lucy called me maybe like a month or two ago and said she ate beef tongue. Okay, Vinny, did, when you ever saw Lucy and she would just eat um, Lucy, Lucy with salmon when, and that was it. Yeah, I mean, the kid was as finicky as a cat. She I mean, would eat chicken nuggets yeah. and I could I could like I had a bargain with her to get eat the tops off of broccolis. Your you know family I mean? was all sugar, all grains. Yeah, I was yeah. ASAG. As a matter of fact, uh, yeah, she and, and Lauren would get together and, and mock you with the ice cream and everything else. They would. He it, still it does that, amazing. but it's, yeah. okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm used to it. Yeah, but you know, she, the fact that she's having beef tongue now. Beef tongue. She's really going like, to tail. Look at her. I know. And I, and I literally, and by the way, sometimes parents, we don't have the kind of influence that we think we have. Sometimes people do. And sometimes you just have those kids who really are teenagers and they still listen to and respect their parents. I didn't have that kind of relationship with Lucy. She didn't want anything to do with what I had to say. When she went to Italy the summer after her freshman year in college and lived at Villa Capelli, that was the first step in her opening up her palate because Paul Capelli literally shamed her into trying a variety of foods. And then she yeah. came home eating all these foods magically. And I was like, oh, I guess it took an Paul old gay Paul man Capelli to was, shame you. Paul Capelli was that kind of guy. Though. He was that kind of guy. You and know. then she started working in the restaurant industry and making friends with chefs and trying food. And that's what opened it up for her. She, and then she got my cookbooks in New York and started cooking from them. And it was like, oh, your recipes are good. I'm like, oh my gosh. Anna, have you, oh my ever, do you remember a food when you were a kid where you couldn't understand how anyone would eat it? I'll give you, I'll yeah. give you an example of mine. And now you, like for me, when I was a kid, avocado, I was like, yeah, that'd be one. What, are you person. fucking insane? Who would eat this mush? This yeah. is what, what, what it doesn't even taste like it. Now I, I eat an avocado probably five oh. or six a week. 
dark meat chicken or chicken skin. I was so repulsed by it as a kid. No, that, not me. I've, I've always been into chicken skin. And, I would watch my grandfather. We go to Roy Rogers and get the fried chicken and I get the kids fried chicken meal, which is basically like a drumstick and then the fries and a drink. What? And, or your Coke, like back when you would have a Coke at a fast food place. And uh, this is the <clears throat> mid, mid to late 70s. And uh, we'd sit at Roy Rogers and I would eat like four bites of my drumstick because I liked the drumstick, but I just only like the meaty part on it. Yeah. And he would take it and just like demolish that thing yeah. like down to the bones. And I was like, <laughs> like, it was so gross to watch him eat that. Also, it's gross to watch old men eat. Sorry, but it just is, especially when you're little. You're like, Ugh. Marie used to do that. She would come around. Ventures, and take our, our Ventures chicken, McGee. She would take our bones and go, yeah, you left half the meat on there. What just and happened? You, you went away. Oh, are. hi, I'm back. <laughs> She's yeah, back. I have no idea what happened. Anna just blacked out. No, hey, Daniel, I get it, man. Um, it's just not easy. Anna gave some great advice there. She raised a daughter and um, you just you, you got to be with her. You can't be against her. It's not going to work any other way. And um, save the fights for when they're going to parties with alcohol. You know what I mean? Like there's bigger fish to fry down the road. Yeah, yeah. You, you trust me. You, you got you, you got you got hell coming up. A lot of it. Just, and boys. Yeah. Oh, my God. Good luck, Daniel. Good luck, Daniel. Godspeed. Yeah. Hey, Daniel, you thought it was bad. When you, I think I think Daniel, he had the COVID. You think it was bad when you had the COVID? You uh, got two girls. Teenage girls. Ready. Yeah. By the way, teenage girls, I observed, are they don't even know how they are some of the most powerful creatures on the planet because they will go there and be the meanest human and that's some power yeah they do not care they will be mean they don't give a fuck when 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 uh i think lucy was like 12 or 13 and i went to work on dean laurie's show the crazy ones for a yeah. week um and you know you know how it is when when the when the wife goes away and then the man has to feed his child for five days in a row because <laughs> it just doesn't happen like that very often yeah and uh, and he would call me and be like, what, what do I feed her? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, whatever you're eating. She doesn't like any of it. I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> well, she's she's mean. I was like, yeah, yeah she I know. <laughs> and then they grow out of it. And it's fine. Yeah. And you love them anyway. She's mean. I was like, yeah, I know. I would just Have you never noticed how mean she is? Um, Anna, let's do a Villa Capelli and then we'll talk. I sent you a film clip clip at the end of the show yeah. last week. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to talk about that. And I sent you a different film clip. Mm -hmm. I watched it. I, I want your reaction on the two film clips. Oh, I can't wait. Let's talk about Villa Capelli. Right. Villa Capelli, the best olive oil on the planet. Uh, Paul Capelli uh, is no longer with us. God rest his soul. Or whatever you say for dead people. I, I just feel like Paul would be like, God rest his soul. You think Paul is in heaven or hell? If he's in hell, he's having a grand old time. See, heaven won't have him, but hell would be afraid he's going to take over. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Wherever he is, he's in he's purgatory having a great for time. the rest of he's running purgatory right now. He wherever he is, he's running the show. I'll tell yeah. you that much. Um, he moved to Puglia and with his husband Stephen and made the best of olive oil on the planet. And Stephen is continuing to run the company. It is for sale stateside. It was sold out for a little while there, but it's back in stock. So make sure you get some. I need to order some more because we need to make more sauce. Vinny uses it in his vitamin D3. It is, it's, I don't trust any other oil. <laughs> I'll just be yeah, honest. yeah, people ask me all the time, I need olive oil. What's the best? It's like, have you ever heard my show? Yeah, I listen to it every week. They, they what won't, do we tell they you to get? You. And then they'll go, oh, really? Is that good? If it's not that one. What's another one? I'm like, what? what? what why there is no buy, other one. Just buy that one. Yeah, just it's the best one. one out there, you know? Now, and I, honestly, I understand whenever they run out at Villa Capelli and people right. go, I'm out of Villa Capelli. I can't get it. Need another one. Else. That's a different story. But now they're for sale. So you have no excuse. Stock yeah, up, go, folks. Go get it. Yeah. Use the discount code Vinny, V I N N I E. No, what the word be Y. And you get 10% off your order. And that's every single time. And again, the same trick applies. Get more so that then you can use the discount code and get your free shipping. It is worth it. The flavored oils are wonderful. The KTM spicy oil is wonderful. The salts are amazing. He has a new grilling salt out there that's fantastic. Uh, so, and Steven's updating with more and more new products all the time. So get your hands on that. Bill Capelli, olive oil. Okay, your clip. 
So at the end of the show, we, we were running some songs at the end of the show next, last week. Next week, we're going to go over these American Heart Association of Illinois papers that Leona sent. And I'll read yeah. another excerpt from the Diet Watchers Guide that I bought for a quarter from the secondhand store. Oh, good. Yeah. You, you can eat all you want and lose up to seven pounds the first week, then two pounds a week until you reach your weight goal. It's kind of a, a wordy um, super title above the title, but we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Um, so we'll get to that next week. So okay, Anna, we, we your were, movie. I don't want to say too much. What do you, what all you right. Like? So last week, um, we were finishing up the show and we played yeah. music at the end and all that kind of stuff. And I sent you a clip and you started Cocoa, watching it for Cocoa Puffs. And yes. Your mouth was just, you know, we turn off the video because we play music. So we can't play the video. And we were just doing it and the rest of the audience heard it. And your mouth was just you were watching what I'm working on in my new documentary, I sent you like a four or five minute clip. Right. And you, your jaw was just like your mouth was like, you couldn't believe. What do you think of this new movie is number one is a departure okay. from what I've done before, right? Yeah, it's a departure. I love it. And I'm giddy with anticipation because I can already tell in the four minutes that I watched how you're going to start to lay stuff out because I already, I already see like 10 myths slash lies that I know you're going to debunk throughout the thing. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like you set it up really well. Well, I sent you another four or five minutes today. Well, that's the one I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. The one last week, it was just more, more, well, last just, week was just cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Yeah. This movie, look, folks, I don't cook anything. Do people know what that means when you say I don't cook it? I don't. It, it means that you're not tampering with evidence. Yeah, no, I'm just. I, you're not cutting together. You're not doing deep fakes of people saying weird shit. You're taking the actual clips. Yeah. Of people saying their things and then putting it against science. And, and by the way, my editor now on the movie, the, you know, I, I you know, uh, I won't say his last name, but Nick, um, he was like, I, I don't know if I want my name on this movie. I'll never work again. <laughs> I'll just never work again. I, you know, people don't, I might just have a whole bunch of people who worked on a movie, their name just won't be on the movie. Because they're worried that they that. Will never work again. They're worried about the, you know, people, the, the big people, you know, that are out there, the big people, I don't want to mention any names. You know, places like Microsoft and such. Anyway, um, Bill Gates. <clears throat> anyway, Is Bill they, Gates vegan? what we're talking about in this movie, he, he, a, a lot of them come into play. You, you're not going to believe what, what we're showing in this movie. I'm, I'm already gobsmacked. It's Anna, you've seen five minutes last week, five, you've seen 10 minutes of, I'm yeah. trying to get it down to 80 minutes. I'm still at, you know, well, you're going to have a lot of bonus footage. Too bad they don't have bon DVDs anymore. Oh, there's going to be bonus a two. content. There's going to be a, a, a two on this movie. There's going to be a two. Mm -hmm. um, just like with that, a documentary, we, we, I'm trying to get it to 80, 90 minutes at the most. It's, it's bizarro. What the stuff we were able to come up with and the stuff we're showing. And again, I'm not cooking any footage. I'm not like the vegans where they go, Hey, if you eat a hot dog, it's like smoking 12,000 cigarettes. And if you eat one egg, you're going to have pus all over your body. I'm actually showing you guys facts and you will be shocked at what you're looking at. I did see that hot dog stat and I would a thousand percent be dead about the hot dogs. Yeah, that was true. Yeah. You know, just like that thing that came out a couple of weeks ago, it's like every time you eat a hot dog, you're knocking one or two minutes off of your life. It's like, OK, that study's never been done. Number one, never been done. Just I've fact. never I've never understood how you could even quantify knocking. You can't. You can't. Off your you, you know, Gina brought it up on a Sunday show and I said, wait a minute. Uh, that study's never been done. There's no way unless you. But do I don't think any study's been done like that. Study of hot dog eaters. What are we going to follow? Joey Chestnut around for 80 years. <laughs> I sat next to him on a plane one time. It was so awesome. Name dropper. He's my hero. <laughs> <laughs> he has to eat all his hot dogs for his job. God, you know, when you do a podcast that includes you know, uh, <laughs> Cam Newton and Joey Chestnut, you realize you've done. 
I have to send you the hot. We did a hot dog eating contest on free radio and I almost threw up. And then the the joke was that I do do throw up. But then they made this like they blended together like creamed corn and other stuff and that I had to put in my mouth for the throw up shot. And then I literally almost threw up because it was so you threw up that. Yeah. But I was so happy to do the hot dog eating contest part, but then not the throw up scene. <laughs> so what was Joey Chestnut like? <laughs> he was so nice. He's ripped I mean, out, this right? Is literally like this has got to be 10, 12 years ago. Which, of course, he was like, I'm a com- I didn't know who Joey Chestnut was. And he's like, I'm a competitive eater. And I was like, oh. I, I, I know the Japanese guy who does it. And he's like, oh yeah, he said, I can't remember his name. Oh yeah. And he said his name I was like, yeah. And then I was like, oh my God, I love the compat. I love the hot dog. He's like, that's what I do. I do the, ho- uh, the hot dog. I mean, I'm telling you, this is like 12 years ago and we were in coach together on a, on a plane. I'm sure he flies first class now. Cause he's, everyone knows he's Joey Chestnut. But I, and then I looked him up after I was like, oh, all right, Anna, we need he's got to get, the best job. We need to get Joey Chestnut on the show. How do we do that? Yeah. All right. Who, who do you, you have an, oh, we Ooh, share an assistant. I don't know anybody. Wait. Yeah, we do. Maybe Megan can do it. All right, Anna, write this down. What could possibly go wrong with you and I sharing an assistant? She's going to go out of her mind. Uh, listen, Anna, hang on. Write, write to her right now and tell her we're doing a show and we need Joy Chestnut on next week. Next Monday. She, she just started to- working for me. She's going to think I'm a bitch. No, tell her Vinny's telling you to write this. No, you've been working for me a long time. Okay, you writer. You, you see, Anna, I can't get you to do anything. <laughs> you write our assistant. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to get something done here. <clears throat> yeah, let's see, Meg, how do you spell Megan? M E. Here, here she is. Right, hang on. Okay. Hang on. Are you just calling her? Yeah, I'm just calling her. See if she picks up. I wonder if she knows who Joey Chestnut is. Hey, uh, can we bring you back on the show again, me and Anna? All right, hang on. Hang on. Uh, look at me producing on the fly here. I, I'm amazed. And all because I refuse to send a text. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Are you there? Can you hear? Yes. Okay, great. Hi. Megan. Hi. Uh, uh-huh. Apparently, you work for Anna, but she's scared of you. So, um, I didn't say that. What did you say? He told, oh. he told me to send a text. It was very demanding. And I said, I'm not sending that text. That's very demanding. You know, you know, I don't even text. I don't even text Megan. I just send out tweets and add her to it. And then she gets it done. <laughs> That's true. She does. She does get an incredible amount of work done. All right, Megan. Yeah. Um, we need, we need you to do some producing for us. We need Joey Chestnut on the show next week. Joey Chestnut. Okay. You don't even know who that is, do you? Who is that? He's a big celebrity. Just go get him. He's gettable. He's like a D-list celebrity. You can get him. (laughs) Okay. You got it. And if you can't find him anywhere else, ask ask, um, Matt Fondelier. He'll probably know where to find him. Yeah, he'll he'll give it to me. Yeah. You're still good. You're good with him, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, tell mm-hmm. Fondelier, Vin, because I do Fondelier a lot of favors. Tell him that Vinny needs Joey Chestnuts. Um, we, we need to get in touch with him. I, I am going to be starstruck. I'll barely be able to talk. You just hang, Anna's going to be slipping around and see Joey Chestnuts going to be. All right, we need him next week on the show. Okay. All right, everything else good? <laughs> yep, as good as it can be, I believe. Yes. And, Andy told me you quit for us already. You didn't even show I up did. one day for I work. I did, I quit you guys already. <laughs> No, <laughs> um, yeah. I was just thinking. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Vinny. I, I, look, but I, I, I but need I to hire. I, I'm, I'm trying to hire three people. You can't hire people, right? Nobody wants to work. I know. I do want to work, but that's the problem. I was overbooking myself. I, know. I was starting to. No, feel no, no it that's with fine. My I, master's degree. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine with you. you know, I know like, you are. I, I was just trying but to I help you out. Him, I told him. I know. I was so thankful, but I told him. You know, whatever you guys need, and I can do from home. Just. I'll do it if he needs help too. So, okay. you know, yeah. All right. Joey so, Chestnut. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, yeah. You still work for me, right? You didn't quit me? Yes. No, okay, I, great. I didn't quit you. Good. I can't quit you. <laughs> I don't know how to quit you. All right. So, I don't know how to quit you. Go get me Joey Chestnut. You got it. All right. See, Anna, that's how you produce. All right. We're going to let yeah. you go. Bye, bye. Thanks, you Megan. Right, bye. You're welcome. That, that's how you produce, Anna. That's how you produce. <laughs>
But you're and, like, you're like text her and tell her she has to do this. I'm like, that doesn't, it's come, it came off way more charming with you on the phone with her than me like saying, Megan, listen. I, I don't, I just, I say. Megan, Vinny, you know, Vinny said you have to do that. Yeah, that, but we, she's an assistant. She assists. She's doing she does. Assist. She's a great assistant. That's, that's her job is to assist. She's way overqualified for it, too. Oh, oh yeah. No, she's like smarter. she's about to have a master's degree. I know she that's the crazy one. She's my assistant. She's, she's going to run this me. town in about five minutes. And you and that's I are going to be like, she's like I know. who's running CBS, Megan? Am I still paying her? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Megan, <laughs> you never stop. Paying less her. Moonves next week. <laughs> She'll take his place. I hope so. Yeah, you know, Megan. Megan's got a strong head on her shoulders. Yeah, and I'm going to cut off the. Well, let, let's do your your thing. I want to do it on the video because people will watch this, folks. Anna Bocino has three products out there. She's got five products, but she's got a pink sauce. She's yeah. got a puttanesca, and she's got a marinara, and that all comes under her food company, Eat Happy Kitchen. So That's go right. to eathappykitchen.com. You can find it in certain grocery stores. Unfortunately, I don't know the name of those stores, but you know who do? Anna do. What? Anna do. If you're a San Diego resident, you can find it at California Keto, which is the market on Genesee Avenue. If you're in Pismo Beach or the Central Coast, you can go to California Fresh Market in Pismo. If you are in Pasadena, you can go to Grassroots in South Pass. And by the way, if you're in Pasadena and you're like, South Pass is different than Pasadena, don't write me. I get it. You guys have a rivalry, but if you're in Pasadena, drive down to South Pasadena and get the sauce. Okay. Uh, we're about to be in all lessons. Um, we were just able to resume manufacturing. So that should be, we should be in all lessons by mid September. So I'm hoping today's Labor Day, by the way, yeah. we're releasing a new episode on Labor Day. We don't, we don't stop for the holiday. Oh, no, we work, baby. We, we work, work, baby. Right. We work right on through. Get my uh, assistant on the phone on Labor Day. There you go. And Megan is really helping with the, getting the word out there to all of the uh, grocery stores. And uh, we'll go from there. And, and by the way, Andy and I are going to be in Las Vegas, October 15th and 16th. So if you're going to at the Las Vegas Keto Expo, lvketo.com. And are you talking at that? Uh, I am talking. All right, I, I saw the talking. list. Anna Vocino is the biggest name on the docket. <laughs> that's well, that's not true, but I am uh, well, excited bigger? to talk. Who's bigger than you? No, you'll one. have to go to lvketo.com to decide yeah. who's bigger. And I'm I know telling you, Anna Vocino is the biggest name. You should you should be the keynote speaker. But if folks are going to be there, make sure you come over to the booth and support NSNG Foods and Pure Vitamin Club and Pure Coffee Club. Andy's going to be there. I'm going to go over there. Let's let's say hi. And uh, somebody, I just put it out there on Facebook. Can somebody please spearhead a meetup? Because Andy and I don't have the bit bandwidth to do that. Uh, so, but we can't go to a restaurant, but at least come over to the booth. The, the meetup's going to be very casual because, you know, Delta and all that. But come on and support. Come on out. Come to this event. It's going to be. Fun. Uh, and, and I just, I, I just want to say this about the event. Um, some people always think, "Oh, I'm going to show up." Vinny may show up. I, unfortunately, there won't be a surprise show up for me. I can't, I can't because I have a, another engagement. I cannot make it to that event. So this is true. They asked me to speak and do all the stuff and be there, and you know, I, I just couldn't make it to that event. Uh, but there are other events I will be at that are coming up after that. But. Um, yeah. Do not think that, oh, Vinny sometimes says he won't show up and then he shows up. Right. I will not be there. Sorry. It's not one of those times, unfortunately. Um, but Andy yeah. and I will be there and we want you guys to come support. And but and this is a great way to order the get the products and support everything and come and say hi and uh, get your book signed. I, I don't I, I I don't know. Bring your book. I'll sign it. <laughs> bring my book. Anna will sign my book. I'll sign Vinny's book for you. Why not? I don't know. Maybe I'll bring a box of books and sell it, but I, I'm flying there, so I don't know. I, or maybe I'll drive there. I like driving. It's Vegas, right? Just drive. Well, now I'm extra time away. Oh, that's right. That's right. Move further west. Mm. But um, yeah, I'll figure it out. Anyway, uh, yeah, please support. So there you have it, folks. Okay. You know Order you sauce. <laughs> yeah, buy, buy some of Anna. Buy the books. Please. I get the book. She's got books. She's got, it. you know what to do with me. We we're talking about at the beginning of the show. You can go to Amazon before you, before you go to Amazon, go to VinnyTotters.com. Look, it's written on my t-shirt. Can you see that? Vinny Totter, I got. Yeah, that's right. It's written on and, my shirt. That's and how go, I remember. Go to VinnyTotters.com and give a super fan donation. 
Yeah, give me twenty three dollars and twenty eight cents. Oh, I'm going to be checking twenty four sixty four. I'm going to be looking at that photo for like twenty minutes just because I want to see the shots. Right. Measure how far apart they are, and I got it. It's a photo. I knew you would love her story. Look, if she was, is she a married woman? Do we know? Probably. Oh, she is. She's a smoke show. Yeah. And next to that gun, add and she's a police officer, so she's a badass. Oh yeah, she's everything, folks. Uh, so go check out everything I'm doing. I'm going to turn this off right here.